Hi, Anson Garcia here. I'm going to be reviewing Cookie Link. Um, I've reviewed and played with this software for probably the last six, seven years from its inception. And although I'm not a fan, I'm actually warming up to it a little bit because for the right business case, um, it does work. For the right customer, it does work. And they seem to um, paid a little bit more attention to it. I, I see Cisco's paid a little bit more attention to it. And I uh, got it working with Expressway and uh, done a little cleanup and uh, stayed up to date on the uh, interface. And it looks like they've kind of decoupled some of the tight integration um, that was there before. You can go watch uh, some prior videos of mine where I show the older versions and how tightly integrated it was. And I think they did this on purpose just to kind of, uh, uh, of course, decouple it, but then decouple a lot of the reliability issues that were, uh, that were going on um, in the old integration. Now, that's my own opinion. Um, anyway, there's a lot of misinformation out there on how this works and uh, what it looks like. So... Hopefully I can clear those up for you today, and uh, hopefully this video is of some benefit. So let's take a look here. I got two users here. I got um, Bill Turner here. We going, we're going with the Pirates of the Caribbean here. And we got David uh, Davy Jones. Both of these um, have Skype for Business 2016 um, clients with Enterprise Voice turned off. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick view of the version so you can see that. Okay, and let's take a look at the Cookie Link version as well. 11.6. Okay, on the back end of this, just so you know what's, um, what servers I'm using um, in the Skype, it's Skype for Business. 2015 on-prem and then we have in the Cisco world uh, Cisco CCM uh, in the portfolio of Cisco UC products 11.1 so let's take a look at what this looks like if you fire up Skype for business um, what that does is kick off the cookie link uh, client so uh, if you fire up this one this one automatically comes up all right, now let's take a look at the interface here. Um, if I want to communicate, now this is somebody with Enterprise Voice already, and this is a user that has Cookie Link and no Enterprise Voice. So I'm primarily going to be dealing with this guy right here. So let's take a look at what it looks like if I want to call somebody in my contact list. So if I want to call somebody, I can right mouse click and you can see here that there's a couple of buttons integrated. There is my place call. That's a Cisco um, menu item. So I have seen some people that kind of position uh, or when they do demos, they keep the enterprise voice on for the particular user. And what that does, it does cause confusion um, because then there's two call buttons in here. And uh, in my view, and I would think that this hopefully is the best practice, if you're going to overlay Cisco uh, Unified Communication on top of Skype for Business, one of the things you're not going to do is um, deploy Enterprise Voice for those particular users that are going to be using the cookie link client um, that definitely causes confusion now what I've seen people position is they put they turn on both of them and they and they they point out look how confusing it is but again um, I believe or it's in my my opinion that you wouldn't deploy two voice systems for a particular user one inside link and one inside Cisco okay so I just wanted to point that out now you get two menu items which is kinda cool this wasn't there before unless you installed productivity tools before but I want to point out both um, 
the productivity tools version, and then this new integration with instant WebEx meetings. So where does this go? We know what place a call is. I can place a call here, and we can see a call go, reaches out to Bill Turner. All right. Uh, but I have this other option. I have this instant WebEx meeting. Well, what that comes from is inside my cookie link client which is really just a phone it's like jabber phone only mode um, looks just like jabber phone only mode um, it's got some different icons up here but you see my meeting so inside communication manager uh, we've configured that this particular user Bill Turner has the ability to uh, run WebEx meetings or configure a WebEx meeting and then we've entered that information prior to this uh, shooting this video so when you have that configured you will get presented with this instant WebEx meeting okay so let's take a look at what that looks like so uh, I can just do it from here or I can be in an IM chat no let me take that back I can do it from here and I'll show you um, the IM chat version so I'm gonna go I'm gonna do that click on that and you can see here what happens is a chat window is going to come up that link for my personal room is going to be thrown in the chat and then um, you can see over here that Davy Jones has gotten a message we get a pop-up toast over here and I can hit accept and you can see we're in a dialog box now inside Davy Jones's PC and he's got a URL and he can just click that URL to join the personal room of Bill Turner so that's kinda neat um, it works very well I can go ahead and click on that and you can still you can see that um, Davy Jones will be taken to the meeting just like we're used to if you're a Cisco WebEx user and I can join the meeting here um, and then we can have the callback feature that's available uh, with WebEx. Now, uh, for you Microsoft people, you can you, you've noticed that um, what I have turned off obviously is conferencing as well. So, what I'm what I'm doing here, I'm 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 putting forth the best possible, or what in my opinion I think the best possible user experience is, and that is not only to turn off enterprise voice. For your Skype users, but turn off conferencing as well. Then, if you're using the Cisco portfolio of uh, applications for uh, voice, video, and collaboration, um, those kind of fall um, into, um, in, in my opinion, again, uh, a user friendly way to escalate to a collaboration and things like that. So here we are in our WebEx meeting, and I'm just going to go, you can, you know, you can call back, you can call your video system if you have a video system and things like that. That's another video. <laughs> okay, so let's just close that down. Um, let's close this room down as well. And we'll close that down. And you can see again what happened here was I just clicked Instant WebEx meeting. That started my WebEx meeting and also popped up an instant message session uh, with um, Davy Jones and it sent him that particular link. Pretty simple and it works very similar in Jabber as well so the experience between uh, Link and Jabber is you know um, kind of the same I guess. Okay so let's stay with this dialogue now. Oh I wanted to show you on the on this particular user Davy Jones I don't have the meetings configured um, in here what I did is I installed productivity tools and with productivity tools you know I'll show you in a second with the Outlook integration but you get this little uh, uh, plug-in also that's kind of inside the or on top of the IM session and then you can start a meeting here if I wanted to start a meeting with Bill Turner and that's a very very similar experience but two ways of kind of doing the same thing one is this guy is all coming from Jabber and then we get that uh, button here and then this way is 
we've installed productivity tools because maybe we want in our Outlook to be able to schedule meetings as well. Um, and part of productivity tools, it'll sense it has you know Skype for Business and it'll provide this little plug in here as well. I I like this better myself because it's all kind of in one or in the client. Okay, now what are the things that are a little confusing or don't work right? Um, I want to kind of give an unbiased opinion here on what this looks like. So the things that I found kind of um, weird, I guess, in the uh, Skype for Business client with Cookie Link is, and I'll just close this just so you see everything together. I'm going to, uh, I'm in a chat with Davy Jones. All right, and Davy Jones gets that from uh, Bill Turner, and he says hello back, and maybe he says, hey, call me. Okay, well, um, Bill Turner over here needs to call Davy Jones. If you look around here, um, I don't have any call button. It used to be that we had a little call button right down in here, but you see that's not there, nor do I have anything here. So kind of when in a instant message, I don't have any call ability um, to call um, Davy Jones. So um, I don't know if that's not a feature anymore because it used to be there. Uh, I will reinstall this software one more time uh, just to make sure I didn't miss anything and I will uh, add to the notes on this video if I did anything in error here. But anyway, uh, it doesn't look like there is any call button here. So I just kind of got to remember either I can go over here to my cookie link client and I can certainly make a call here, right mouse click, call, whatever. You know, um, I can do that and you can see we're extending a call over here. Um, that's one option. Um, uh, uh, and then, of course, you can right mouse click and call here, right? Or call with edit, that is. All right. So I have a few options here, but I have to go to this other window over here if I'm within a chat. So I don't particularly like that um, myself, but um, it is what it is. Again, it used to be there where there was you could hover over and you could bring down this and it'd be some kind of call button here. Okay, that was also, and the reason I'm fairly sure that it's been taken out of this version, uh, this cookie link version, is because it used to be the same in Outlook. So let's take a look at what the Outlook experience is for a particular user. I see that Davy Jones sent me an email here and it used to be that I could just right, hover right here and then I could extend it. You can see that's grayed out, but uh, I could uh, come right down here to one of these menus and be able to extend the call. In fact, I think it was this one uh, before. Again, if you want to see the prior version of Cookie Link, look at my past videos. But so I don't have um, any call ability here. In fact, I thought it was missing completely until I looked up in the right hand corner over here. So you can see here, this is that click to call ability that's um, came from Jabber into Outlook. And then I can click to call right here. Okay, you can see that call is extended over here. So, um, just a little bit different way of do, doing things. And I can also, if I'm looking at the email, I also get that menu item here also. Um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. Um, anyway, just a little bit different user experience. Uh, again, this is just to make sure you're, you know all the versions here that I'm using. Uh, this is um, uh, 2010, uh, Link 2010, uh, excuse me, Outlook 2010. So again, I will be upgrading this, and if anything changes, I'll post it in the notes or do um, append this. Um, 
uh, a video showing the newer version. Uh, I think that's it. And um, just a few other things I'll click around on over here. Um, we got voice messaging here. Obviously, that's where your voice messages are going to come, your visual voice messages. And you can also call your voicemail. Again, this is regular, you know, jabber stuff. So you can see that this newer version is very jabber oriented. I even have some widgets in here that I've pushed down and that works as well. I have, you know, my phone uh, stuff. Of course, this is using... Um, you can use a soft phone here, or you can use your phone. Um, I'm doing RDP here, so I just choose to use my desk phone here. But do things work the same way um, either way? Um, I think that is it. Um, hopefully this has been helpful to you, and thanks for watching.